A fierce battle with Dark Dragon ensued when the Runefaust army invaded. With the heroics of Max and the Shining Force, Dark Dragon was defeated. Sonic Software Planning. Folks, it's Sega CD Monday, and a fierce battle with Dark Dragon ensued. Oh, wow, yeah. that was fast. That's, there they are. Uh huh. They're dark. This is going to be a good one. Alex already crashed the virtual Sega CD twice hey, through the hey. mere act of chatting. Yeah, yeah, no, that was not my fault. I went and I chatted and I said something, and then as I did that, when I pressed like enter or something, it was like, oh yeah, the emulator's frozen now. Yeah, you hit the freeze emulator button. Listen, it's not my fault that <coughs> there you have a very large button on the keyboard next to the enter key that says freeze and break the emulator. <laughs> Thank you, Uzi, for the 27 month reset. Do appreciate that. Bowing yeah, yeah. So, how are we? What are we? What are we doing today, Danny? All right. So, folks, today we are embarking Some on an epic weird. quest. Some I want you all to weird. make your characters. Roll for initiative and uh, eat some halflings. I don't know what you do. Do, do not, do not do that part that Danny said. <laughs> Thank you, step aside for the 15 month free sub. That, that rules, and I am sorry that we're all talking about uh, whatever. Anyways. Yep, we're all here sitting at the big old D and D table with our uh, Jolt Cola, with our uh, freaking I don't know. What do you do in D and D? You glue some beer cans together and you play Wisest Wizard. <laughs> That's how you do it. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to our D&D group. We're already drunk. We're going to play some fantasy-themed games. We got your elves, your dwarves, your your harflings, as they call them. Harflings? Harflings, yes. That's no. how they, that's how it pronoun it's pronounced somewhere. It's fine. I'm sure of it. We got some great games. We got a first party, a bunch of first party Sega games. We got what you see here, Shining Force CD. We have Dark Wizard. We have other games with elves and dwarves, and this is going to be a good one. I could already tell. I love that Shining Force is Desert Chrome. I just want to say that. Yep, it's been there since the beginning. God, that's so Desert good. Chrome CD. <laughs> so, Alex, why don't you load us up some Dark Wizard? We play a true classic. Now, this is a rare opportunity. This is a game that I had back when the Sega CD was new. I barely ever got any games for this thing because, you know, getting the system was a very expensive Christmas present. Mm -hmm. So I only got like one game every birthday and Christmas. But whenever I got that game, I made sure it was an RPG, something I could spend hundreds of hours on. I got stuff like Lunar. I got stuff like Popful Mail. And I got Dark Wizard, a first-party, Sega-developed strategy RPG that I sunk more than 100 hours into and never beat. You never beat it? <laughs> nope. And I can tell you as an owner of this game back then that the idea of a game concept by Kenji Tirada meant absolutely nothing to me. I saw that screen at boot up every time, and I never knew who it was. Uh, turns out he uh, wrote the script for Final Fantasy 1 through 3. Oh, wow. It's a pretty big name. Turn it up for us, would you? Yeah. 
There were beautiful valleys of rich soil. There were castles of great strength and charm. And the people of Cheshire were very happy. Sabrina, the goddess of daylight, and Arliman, the dark god of night, both gave life to this land, ruled by the great and good King Rashan. King Rashan dictated that the people of Cheshire would be heard by the rulers of many individual kingdoms, and all was well within the wondrous mountains and the lovely seas. Oh, good. I guess we're done here, then. The king's high priest, Zahart, was charged with the task of administering this peace to fulfill the people's dreams of freedom. Yeah, he also wrote for animes and movies and stuff sunlight. like that. You don't bow! Bow whips ass! Yet Zahark Sorry. had plans of his own. Yeah, I love the, the way he said the lovely seas. The jealousy of the dark Arlemen towards and the Sabrina great mountains. And a beautiful light. Just a good and country all around. prepared an evil plan to pit the two gods against each other. The high priest's wicked plan to rule the lands of Cheshire had begun by his summoning the powers of darkness and giving life to Arlemen through the use of an ancient and forbidden spell. Ooh. Give the, uh, give the emulator the focus, if you would. The peaceful balance of the I'm scared of it being unfocused. Of Fair enough. She must act quickly to prevent the lands from being consumed in total darkness, as evil would surely reign. Neighboring communities went about their daily chores, attending shop, working the fields, fishing the seas, and the kingdom leaders continued to assist the people in their pursuits of peace and security. We're going back, baby. 300 years. Shop. Many We're wonder, farmers. Who would one day be oh, heir to the king's We're an agrarian society. Had no okay. and therefore no children. I want to be on the gig economy Yet the for many farmers. kingdoms of Cheshire did not worry, because they were unaware of the universal battle brewing in the heavens above. Meanwhile, Zahark had implemented Man, a there's a lot happening. <laughs> Hold Meanwhile, on, everybody. Zahark and the dark lord of the blackened skies prepared to cover the golden lands of Cheshire in eternal darkness. Featuring guest art from Peter wife, Chung. The enlightened goddess of light. That's Sabrina. not true. <laughs> Sabrina, having powers as equal to that of Arlemen, prepared for the coming battle. She had enlisted two great leaders of the land and gave great powers to each one of them. One of these leaders... We got some UK exclusive jokes. Boys. Good. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm, I'm glad folks are doing that. Buy our UK expansion to understand those jokes. <laughs> Soon the battle between the goodness of light and the evil darkness became fierce during which the goddess Sabrina discovered who was responsible for this terrible uprising. Sabrina guided the beautiful armor to do battle with and kill the evil Zahark. Oh, good. Was Glad that's done with. The All right. The king's most trusted grand wizard, Gilliam. I should note this is the one and only game in the series. It's not recapping previous chapters or anything. The evil Arliman. He imprisoned the now eternal dark monster. Vianne had disappeared while assisting Gilliam atop a fearsome dragon, while aiding Gilliam in the capture of Arliman. Jesus H. The 10,000 day war had ended, and on to the first, the oh, it feels like a 10,000 day intro. <laughs> to act as both king and queen to all of Cheshire, successor to the great King Rashan, who was killed in the terrible war. Soon, harmony was once again restored, and the people celebrated. Y yay! Peace. The good teachings of Rashan and the blessed goodness of light have ruled this land under the great armors for some 300 years now. All right, sounds good. But suddenly, from out of nowhere, the nightmare of those turbulent years is once again about to return, to unfold unto an entirely new, unsuspecting generation. <laughs> then one day, for no reason... <laughs> I like that just like, it just happened again, don't Our beautiful it's... mountains and gorgeous seas were sieged by the evil uh, people. Hey, what are you gonna do? That's what she looks like. She's just this like... game has a great soundtrack. Yeah, rocking out. Dark Wizard. Alright, this is pretty cool looking. A game you will never beat, even if you spend your whole life playing it. That's something I can attest to. There's four different characters, four different campaigns. The game advertises itself as having over 300 hours of gameplay. Like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I spent at least 100 on this game, and at some point I got stuck and couldn't figure out what to do. And then my Sega CD broke, so that's the end of it. Okay, this was the game I was playing when the disc, uh, when the drive stopped reading discs. Some real history going on here. 
So it was Dark Wizard that did it. Yep. Well, I blame the 32X that was attached to. True. The graphics started to corrupt. Alright, y'all. So we have four different heroes to choose from. Or rather, two heroes and two anti-heroes. We're going to see the animated intro of whoever everyone wants to see. Then we're going to see some gameplay. Then we'll go back and see the other intros, because they're all pretty good. Alright, so which do we want to see first? Do we want to see Prince Armor the Ninth? The 18-year-old Prince of Cheshire Kingdom? Do we want to see Robin? The 22-year-old skilled horsewoman in the Holy Army. She does not look like a horsewoman. Do we want to see the puppet master Amon, the vampire with plans of his own? Oh, wow. Or do we want to see Crystal the Sorceress, who seeks vengeance on Velenese for the death of her sister? Wow. Wow, for, for I death of all. For death of sister. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm seeing some, some votes for Amon already. I'm seeing some for Robin. I just... Sorceress. Alright, it's between the Sorceress... And the Puppet Master. Who it, will it be? I... Of course, the people latch on to the two evil characters. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I got some votes for Crystal, so we got some votes. I'm, I'm just saying. Hmm. Puppet. Crystal. All right, it's all, it's, all, it's all tied up now. Whoever votes next. Okay, it's Crystal. Crystal. We're going with Crystal. We'll see Amon in a bit. Uh, Amon has some wonderful voice acting, so please look forward to that. But for now... Let's see the tragic backstory of the Sorceress Crystal. I love her. Let's go easy. You can also change your name. You can customize a lot in this game. Uh, turn it up for us a little bit more. There are those, even as they are protected by the light of Sabrina. Who would That's good. Their souls to an insignificant demon in order to gain evil powers. Crystal, the sorceress who is in the service of the king, and Marcus, the holy warrior, hailed for his swordsmanship, Click the window. are here for this purpose. The two have only one wish, to avenge the murder of Kimberly, the sorceress's younger sister, and Marcus's fiance, at the hands of King Armor the Eighth. Stupid king. When this demon found out that the object of the two's vengeance was none other than the goddess of light and King Armor the Eighth, the demon was more than willing to help in exchange for their souls. Yeah, they're avenging Sistel's Christer. This is one of the two anti-heroes. She has her reasons for wanting revenge. But still pretty evil. Sister, I will now search for the legendary Dark Sword Traeger, which I have been told will cut down the good of Cheshire in one strike. Hell yeah. However. However. If I have not returned by the promised date, you must go on without me. The opportunity to strike at armor will be limited. But when this time arrives, avenge Kimberly. You got it, dude. <laughs> I like the animation in this. It's I pretty like nice looking. Marcus! I love this. Marcus, the time has come. I must go. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> Just sitting here in the middle of my pentagram. As one does. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's Dark Wizard. I love this game. Armor the Eighth. Hold. Who are you? What are you? How did you get in here? Uh. I am here to fulfill the vengeance of the royal priestess Kimberly. What? Check out my invisible oh, gun. <laughs> Die, you pig! So several of the intros begin with the king being killed. <laughs> the king is not very good at staying alive. Well, this is Kimberly's revenge. Die, Arm of the Eighth! What revenge? What the hell are you talking about? I didn't kill any royal priestess! What? What? Uh, uh. There is no, no time for this! Blood. 
King Death number one. Rip. Kimberly, I have avenged you. We shall see about that. Villainies! I congratulate you on the avenging of your sister's death. However, the one who killed your sister was not armor. <gasps> what? Villainies! I... Oopsie. It was I. What? What? This king was a stubborn one. I dispatched a demon to you two and made you think that Kimberly was killed by the king. I'll get Personally, those toitles. I expected the warrior Marcus to have killed the king rather than you, you weak sorceress. You. <laughs> get angry. Your anger will turn to great evil. A power which I can use because you have sold your soul to the demon. Your hatred will serve me well. You bastard! I will never serve the one who killed my sister! Villainies! I shall never forgive you! I shall... I will... Kill you! <laughs> this is good. You will now have the opportunity to taste the fate of those who dared go against me! <laughs> yeah, such language. She said the B word. And thus your adventure begins as the conflicted sorceress who was tricked by the evil villainies into killing the king. Uh, good news is you get to take over the kingdom, because that's how it works. Cool. And now you get to lead the king's armies to battle to uh, seek further vengeance, I guess? <laughs> I have killed your king. Foully struck down by someone who isn't me. Uh, uh, someone struck him. I got a staff, though, so that means I'm in charge. Are you with me? Sure, I guess. Alright, you're a queen now. <laughs> cool, that was easy. So yeah, depending on which faction you choose, you get a different batch of creatures and humans and dwarves and such to, uh, to take charge of. If you're one of the two evil characters, you can straight up summon monsters here. So let's let's uh, let's give him a cockatrice. Oh, I love him. Let's hire up a dragon pup, which you, when you level it up, it becomes a dragon. Really? Uh huh. Oh my God! Look at that baby, baby. Yeah, if you keep your leader on your home castle, you can just summon and hire as many people as you want. Something to like an army of up to like thirty people. You can also give them names, change their alignments. It is a very complex game. Uh, this one is a, uh, a, a bimera. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the dragon? What about the dragon? You gotta fix the dragon. Do something with the dragon. Okay, we'll call it. We'll call it puppy. Yes. Yeah, bimera. Go to the dragon. Go to the dragon. I don't think we can adjust the name until it's its turn. Bullshit! It okay. doesn't start with an active turn. Okay. Also, when you're on your castle, you can select uh, magic. Like, uh... Aw. Okay, so Crystal doesn't have anything that can directly attack the other king. The fun thing is, you can just sit on your castle in some levels and choose to cast magic directly at the enemy leader and eventually just plink it to death. Oh, that's good. But otherwise, this is pretty much your typical strategy RPG, based on hexes. All your favorite hexagons are here. I love these hexagons. Now, I didn't know this back in the day, but this game actually is a huge ripoff of a game we've covered before called Master of Monsters. That was published by Renovation, and it did the exact same thing. You summon monsters, guide them on a grid-based map, and that that's it. They ripped off the mechanics wholesale for this. But they can get away with it because they're Sega. They were all like, nice idea you got there. Now it's ours. Thank you, Melting Swatches, for the four-month resub. Melting Swatches says, thank y'all for the hard work of playing obscure video games for me. No worries. Yeah, no is. problem. I'm showing you the best parts of this game. I'm saving you like 100 hours of work. <laughs> I, I get to see Dragon Puppy, so please understand, this is, this is more for me than you at this point. <laughs> I think the way it works is summoning new hires into your army costs you magic points while hiring humanoids costs money 
Mm. So it's a it's a constant striking a balance. You can also go into cities if you set a human character on there. So the dragon can't go inside? The dragon cannot communicate with people in cities. That is <laughs> they, bullshit. They tend to not like that. And that's where the game kind of turns into a, a traditional JRPG. Because it's not just enough to win these battles. You also have to use key items. You gotta deliver fetch quests. Uh, in between matches, you uh, traverse a world map, which takes time. It's a super complex game. And there weren't complete playthroughs on YouTube up until this year, at which point I, I looked and there was like... It was like uh, part one of four, and each part is 12 hours long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a lengthy game. If you want your value for your money, this is the game for you. You can also get drunk and eventually get kicked out of the tavern, but we should talk to everyone first. That's really funny, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, this is where you buy things you can make your army stock up with and use. You can see the mayor. Oh, Trager, our brother, was looking for that. Mm. Maybe we'll find it in about a hundred hours or so. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is we're not going to see much of this game, but I do want to make a case for it because I think this is one of the best Sega CD games. Unfortunately, strategy RPGs aren't everyone's cup of tea. You have to be kind of invested in it. I love this guy. Like, doesn't, doesn't he, isn't he as a priest weirded out that you're, like, this evil demon army or something? <laughs> no, he's fine. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this game takes cues from classic Sega games like Alex Kidd in High Tech World. There's things where you have to pray a certain number of times in order to either change your alignment or, in some cases, progress the story. It's not always made obvious, either. So, why'd you have to pray there? Um, I just did it for the hell of it. Sometimes, okay. if you pray a lot, you get a bonus. I'll have your wine. I'll have some of your whiskey. I like that he's like, oh, have you look better when you're drunk. Hail. Hail. Shouldn't drink too much. Yeah, well, I got a lot to drink over. I got kicked out. <laughs> 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 Alright, so I got my priest nice and drunk. Success. Does, 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 that, does that do anything? Like, do you like walk weirder or do you play differently? It doesn't matter, I don't think. Oh man. Let's That's hire a, a hobbit. Let's, uh, let's have a chaotic hobbit in our party. Yes! And his name shall be... Um... <laughs> Tobit. Tobit That's the Hobbit. Good. This is this is good. We're going to definitely get our own D&D podcast by this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, yeah. We're going to join the ranks of everyone else. It's going to be... Uh... Coming for you, Adventure Zone. God, there's so many right now. And when you're done with your turn, you hit A and you hit End. And then watch the magic happen. The computer usually doesn't do much on its first turn. Cool music, though. Mm -hmm. I heard this song so much as a kid. Yeah, we're basically adventure pals. <laughs> <laughs> Going on literal adventures. Alright, I'm going to try and lead my monsters into battle so you can see what that looks like. Now, if you paid attention during the intro, you'll notice that I set the options from text to real. What that does is it lets you see the battles unfold using real graphics. Ooh. You may be wondering why that was off by default. Well, we're going to find out very soon. Because while this game has animations, uh, various attacking and defending animations for each class and summonable character, this is a CD format, so that takes time to load. And considering that, you know, you got something like 30 different people attacking each turn, <laughs> that results in a massive amount of load time. So we'll see that a couple times before I disable it, and I can show you just how fast the game is without it. Unfortunate, because that was one of the game's main selling points. Like, hey, look at all these huge monsters fighting. Yeah, you're never going to want to see that, because it takes way too long to load. Yep, load times in a 300-hour game. Oh, here we go. Load. They're attacking my chimera. No, wait, it was a chimera attacking my harpy. Yeah, kick oh him! Oh my god, I love that she does the kicks! 
And then the Camaro perks up and is like, you see that shit? And they're both looking at us like, all right, we're done. <laughs> uh, yo, is it worth it? Now, from my memory, that's actually, in this emulator, way shorter load time than it is on actual hardware. There's something like a 10 second wait before and after the battle. So, yeah, that's something you want to turn off, like, right away. And that's why it's disabled by default. Oh my god, the skeleton. Bonk. Kick his ass, Harpy! Oh, no counterattack. He's like, no, I can't, I can't. This is skeleton. It kills like a caveman skeleton! <laughs> Like, how could you beat that? Oh yeah, eventually you do need to start grinding. That part gets a little repetitive. But it's at least fast if you turn off these animations. Oh, my harpy not looking so good. Shame my priest is off drunk in a bar somewhere. <laughs> He's puking in a back alley. I think it is Shining Force rules where you can counterattack, but it's up to a dice roll. A lot of this will be familiar if you played Shining Force or something like Advance Wars. Alright, Dragon Pup. You're gonna take out this Harpy. And of course, all these enemies are weak to one another. There's specific balances, things oh like that. Oh my god! Angel. Oh, that was a good hit. Okay, so Dragon Pups are strong against Harpies. They're very strong. Just a big ol' headbutt. I think I'll do a couple more rounds so you there's can see. There's a five hour speedrun of this game, apparently. That's pretty good. How? I, seriously. Oh, I can petrify. Let's petrify this skeleton. Yeah, screw him. That's the benefit of having a cockatrice in the party. I don't think it worked. He's like, uh, I don't have muscles for you to that petrify. Was, that was a cool looking Pokemon, though. Mm hmm. Like, do you mean you need to calcify me? I mean... <laughs> can you have bears as units? Asks real Soviet bear. Do I don't think there are any bears. You got cockatrices, you got dragons, you got uh, serpents. Those are good in water-based levels. Unfortunately, no bears that I remember. Oh, I hope she doesn't counter. Okay, good. See, I put my harpy on the mountains so non-flying creatures can't get to him. Okay, now we can finish off this harpy. Alright. Normal battle. This first battle typically takes like an hour. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to do like one more turn after this, I think. Because you get the gist of it. It's a very lengthy and meaty strategy RPG. Perfect if you're into that sort of thing. Not so good if you're running a stream for entertainment for others. <laughs> she just floated away like, goodbye. Yeah. Maybe that should be our first marathon stream. We just we play Dark Wizard until we finish. Jesus Christ. I I don't know if I can do that nowadays. Back when I was 13, maybe. Like what else was I going to do? I was sleep. I was just waiting for them to invent the internet. We shouldn't sleep either. We should just 500 hours of streams. Let's do it in shifts. Oh, counterattack. Yeah, get him Dragon Pup this dragon. <laughs> BBS Danny. I wasn't dialed into the BBSs. <laughs> I, was, I was jealous of the people on public access who would show themselves logging onto BBSs. Uh. Alright, skeleton versus dragon. Or chimera? No, yeah. cockatrice. cockatrice. Hey, quit, quit bonking my cockatrice with a bat. Damn skeleton. That did Barely nothing. That nothing. did nothing. Cockatrices are so bad against skeletons. You'd, you'd think it'd be easy since they're just bones and, you know, birds like to pick apart bones, but... Let's mega heal everyone. That's another cool thing you can do. You do get experience points, you can level up, you can have subclasses, you can evolve your critters, like the Pokemons. Show one more battle, and then I'll show just how quick the game is without the battle animations. Bonk. Chomp, 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 chomp. Bonk. Yeah, the animations are cool, but they are incredibly impractical. <laughs> Alright, so check this out. We're gonna go to Ops. Mm -hmm. Let's turn that battle display off. And here's what the battles look like without the animations. 
There, it's oh. over. <laughs> that, nice. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna put any sort of time into this game, you want to turn off those battle animations, unfortunately. Uh, we'll go ahead and move into the city, see if there's anything new, and then I think we'll reset and see the other characters' intros, because they're all amazing. Oh good, I really want to see the vampire. Good god, the vampire. You aren't ready for how the vampire sounds. Oh yeah, and there's a freaking day-night system! The monsters are more powerful at night, and the humans are more powerful than the day. And you also get different people you talk to in the towns. This is a game of infinite death. Danny Danny was pointing out earlier, but you can go to the pwn shop. The pwn shop? PWN, yeah. Yo, matey! It is the pwn shop! Oh my god. I'm gonna get pwned. <laughs> Look at this guy! What's with that face? Oh my god, I love him. <laughs> Looks like Superman. I got everything. Alright, um, I'll uh, go be right back. Why don't you back. go check that out? Yeah. Oh no, wait, they were just dropping something off. Oh, okay. I'll still get it. We have a package. Okay, let me bring it in place. It may be valuable. Yeah, it may be, uh... It may be my, my copy of the uh, America's Funniest Home Videos DVD video game. Are you kidding me? Did you get another goddamn it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody tell Alex I've been buying DVD video games. With our savings. That was the mayor. He looked a little too shifty to be a mayor. <laughs> if you're exhausted, visit the church. Uh, they can't really help you or anything, but, uh, you know, that's a thing you can do. Wait, this town is named Scherster? Alright, your 20 copies of America's Funniest Home Videos are here. Cool. They all look like they've been through hell and back. Nice, looking forward to it. So yeah, hopefully I've gotten at least the gist of this game down for you. I can attest this is a very fun, very good game for 1994. Not so sure how much it holds up today, but I think it compares favorably to stuff like Master of Monsters and other hex-based strategy games for the Mega Drive. Famitsu did not agree. They gave this a 23 out of 40, which is what? basically calling it a big pile of shit. Yeah, wow. Barely, barely anything gets below a... Uh, uh, a 30, and they give this a freaking 23, this epic fantasy RPG that Sega spent years on. All for naught. Screw you, Famitsu, this game's great. Okay, Alex, why don't you hit that reset button, and we're gonna see the other character intros to really rub it in just how wrong Famitsu was. Okay, hit soft reset. Oh yeah, this had a huge, huge budget. This was also infamous for being delayed a lot. Uh, there's even a couple of jokes in Working Designs' Lunar translation mentioning Dark Wizard. Specifically lines that are saying like, Oh, Dark Wizard, come no more, you're too late and too little, or something like that. <laughs> like, specifically calling it out. So, so, let's see, let's see the prince's story. I think we're gonna work our way up to the vampire. Oh man, okay, fair enough. Actually, before we do that, can I please, please, please do one thing? Sure. Can I please, please, please turn off system sounds? Yeah. Okay. One quick second here. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, give me my window back. It's here, it's here. Thank you. But what about the good guys? The good guys have their reason for fighting. Like the prince and son of the king we killed in the other story. I wonder why he wants to fight. Is it because we killed his dad? No idea. Armor the Eighth arrived at the remote lands of Quinton, and the wounds he received at the hands of the demon army had proved eventually to be quite fatal. Oh, he died here and too. The of Armor's followers looked to the heavens in vain. This king sucks. They could not save their king. Yes, it's quite fatal, I'm afraid. It's quite fatal to die. <laughs> My king, please forgive us. We are able to hold only a plain ceremony to mark your eternal rest. Oh, Sayoko, oh, goddess of light. Now, prince, you must reign as king. I wonder if people have recorded the endings for this. I've never seen any ending for this game. by his son, Armor the Ninth. The new 
king, as required of his position, must wed a princess of a neighboring country. Although in love with his princess, revenge for his father was forefront in his mind, as he swore to strike down Belenese. Chelsea, what's the matter? <laughs> Your Majesty, for Chelsea, this is the day when her tears of sorrow have changed to tears of joy. Although she is fearful of your vow to defeat the evil monster Velenese, she truly is happy on this her wedding day. The new queen would give her life for you. She loves you so. I couldn't be happier. I thought she was just like bedazzling her face. <laughs> Turns out those are tears. Chelsea, <laughs> everyone is waiting. You must show them your beautiful smiling face. <laughs> the royal Please wife explainer. Please allow you much happiness. <laughs> oh, Marie. Oh. oh. Dramatic effect. And on this joyous day, Quentin was blessed as the only place in the lands of Cheshire to enjoy the warmth of the kind Sabrina, the goddess of light. And the crowd cheered as their new king prepared to wed his love, Chelsea. Yet unbeknownst to the cheering crowd, Belenese was determined to extinguish even the last bit of light from Quentin. Yeah, the flickering transitions are pretty good. They totally hide the lack of animation. <laughs> Alright, I like the dragon. The demon! How dare you attack at such a time of celebration! I was about to get drunk. Look out, my king! No! Chelsea? This can't be happening! <laughs> Chelsea! And thus, the King of Cheshire, enveloped by darkness, drew his sword, and from the depths of his sorrow left Castle Quentin, vowing to destroy Belenese, the dark wizard who had killed his father and now has taken his only true love. He's the dark wizard, Belenese. Ah. Title drop. So, hey. so even the heroic figures have darkness in their hearts. Uh-huh. This game sure likes using strobing as a transition effect. Yep. Gotta hate it. It was way more acceptable back in the day. Oh, I love this song. This song's amazing. Hell yeah. Oh, you can summon things too. So I guess all the characters have some sort of darkness in them that allows them to summon different creatures, but only armor gets to summon uh, serpents, which are cool. Gives you a different variety of things you can Whoa, pick from. Oh, cool! Yeah, look at that. I like them. His name is Serpent. Mhm. Mm good one. <laughs> Why don't you reset us once more, and we're okay. gonna see the other good guys intro before moving on to the puppet master vampire. Who everyone wants to see. God, I want to see that vampire. Mm-hmm. Production values for this game, pretty good, I'd say. This is one of the best-looking Sega CD games in terms of intros, even if the in-game map graphics aren't too impressive. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying this, but I know that it'd probably be just a massive pain in the ass to actually play. Might be better nowadays, now that you have emulator speed-ups and mm -hmm. uh, reduced load times. But it's still a very dense game that was meant to occupy a lot of time back in the day. But that's why you got a Sega CD for games with infinite playtime. Including a couple we're gonna see after this. Alright Robin, you skilled horsewoman. Show us what you got. and monsters created by Belenese are unleashing their fury. The second cavalry dispatched to fight the demons have all been killed. Except one survivor, the cavalry. The center is cool. Engaged in a desperate battle against a demon monster. It's a pretty buff lizard man. I do like this lizard. Castle 
Oh, apologies for the strobing. Yeah, her armor is unusually practical, isn't it? <laughs> no exposed skin or anything. Ooh. <laughs> I like that face. That's a pretty good face. There's a lot of good faces in this game. Yeah. What? Where am I? Where is the king? There were rumors that the king had died. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, it is true. God I, damn it. Kale, who have raised you since you were an infant, would certainly not deceive you. The stupid king cannot stay alive. I thought his royal highness had finally escaped to Quiffin. I heard he was wounded, but... There is great regret and sadness for the king as he was defeated by the demon army. But before he died... Are we dropping frames? It may just be the animation. He has entrusted uh... his kingdom to you, the greatest warrior of Quentin. His kingdom? Oh yeah, we are. That is to say... Shit. Oh god, we are, yeah. The sovereign ruler. But this cannot be. There is no one else. Even David, who has been called the master swordsman, knows you are best qualified. Even David? 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 Yes, he is the one who brought you back from the River Neity, where he found you barely alive. And thus Robin, the leader of Quentin's cavalry, became the new ruler of Cheshire, as the dying wish of the king dictated. Still dropping frames. A lot, yeah. Stay, Stay strong, stream. You can do it. All right, anyway, King's dead again, but this time we have a new ruler, Robin the Horsewoman, who will lead with her horses. I may let this sit here for a few seconds while our bitrate stabilizes. Twitch is kind of taking a dump on us right now. That was a big diarrhea dump. All right, so what's she got? She can summon hippogriffs. That's pretty cool. She can summon rocks. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta get me that big bird boy. Okay. So this is what a hippogriff looks like. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Oh man, come on, Twitch. Twitch, you know you want to fix Get it yourself. together. We're streaming Dark Wizard. The game everyone wants to see. And we'll summon a rock. Yes, yes, yes! Star of the hit Fox comedy from the 90s. Oh, it's on fire! I like it. Quit dropping! It's... Pick up those frames! Quit dropping them on the, on the floor! All I can hear is a clinking of fucking frames on tile here. Don't you do it! Don't you drop them! I'm watching you. All right, we dropped a few thousand frames, but it looks no. Here it's it's getting worse again. Come on, you. I can smell what the rock is cooking. The rock is cooking up all my frames. Okay, now it seems to have actually. Started. Okay, so okay. so why don't you reset the game, and we'll look at the thing everyone wants to see, the vampire puppet master intro. As we continue to drop frames, let's just keep going. I'm see I'm seeing it's not that bad. Let's just keep going. Thank all you right. for all. Thank you all for uh, bearing with us while uh, either Spectrum or Twitch decide to just. Who knows? I'm Maybe trying I... to run an artful stream here. An artful stream with vampires. Kinji Terada would not approve. Mm mm. Seeing the drop frames and shaking his head. Now, I gotta warn you, this has some pretty abrasive voice acting coming up, so I hope you're ready for that. 
Oh no, my least favorite thing. Weird voice acting <laughs> in CD-ROM multimedia games of the 90s. No one likes that. Yep, the vampire. He, he has a voice. He sure does. And he has plans of his own. Are we, are we stable? Should we just start this? Let's just start it. It's, it's gonna keep going up and down. Alright, at the very least you should be able to hear the voiceovers, which is all you need. GamePro should give this a 5 out of 5. It's excellent. Classic cartoon sound effect. I strike at the darkness. Oh, it was a, a demon or something. wishes. I know of one with tremendous power. Yes, I have heard that in addition to the harm caused by Belize's army, he has brought to life deadly vampires cloaked as friends to fool us. Thank you for your help, Susan. It is nothing. I shall summon him at once, if your majesty wishes. Yep, there's that bear content you wanted to see. Fine. Vampires can disguise them themselves as friends. It appears that they have increased in Thanks to the dark wizard Villanese's resurrection. Eh? Oh, that guy again. Villanese, come back to me. He is nothing. Who, who is it? Is, is this a vampire? Yes. Oh my god, I'm in love. <laughs> and once again, the king dies. <laughs> like a droopy dog Cobra Commander. <laughs> yes, it really is supposed to flicker like that, I can confirm. <laughs> so yeah, uh, our Vampire Puppet Master has the best voice actor in the game. In the history of the world, IMHL. I'm a vampire! Wee <laughs> And what he's done is he take he's taken over the king. The irony is this the this is the one narrative where you think the king's alive, but nope, he's actually dead. Oh, oh, that's wild. Yeah, you are the king, only you are also a vampire, and you got to take down Velonese for your own reasons. What are those reasons? Play 150 hours of this game to find out, cause I sure am not. PC98 Junior, this is emulation, cause our second CD is. It's dead. It's just straight up dead. Let's see if I can use some magic here. Ooh, I can use Bladestorm. Fuck it, let's take out the boss. No, no, go up here. There we go, that guy. Hang on. It's been dead for the past few streams. It's... We gave it a nice funeral. He's tiny. He's a baby. But he packs a punch. <laughs> I really love this game, and there's no way I can encompass the whole thing over even a series of streams. It would just take way too long. But take my word for it, Dark Wizard for Sega CD, a true classic, a top 10 for me, and a game you should definitely check out. 
<laughs> Plus those intros, they're just so good. They are. So All let's right. move on. Let's let's get even nerdier. Let's go with an officially licensed Advanced Dungeons and Dragons product. This is Eye of the Beholder. Now, this game was pretty popular back in the day. It started off on Amiga and DOS and was later ported to Super Nintendo and Sega CD. Super Nintendo version was actually published by Capcom of all people. So, this was a pretty big deal. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, man. This is an official Strategic Simulations Inc. product. Did you freeze it? Yeah, it froze. Okay, load it up again. Okay. Now, who's played this? This is a first-person dungeon crawler. Shit, should we restart the stream? The stupid... It keeps dropping frames. Do you really wanna? I don't know. Like, start and stop it? Hmm. Load the intro to this, we'll see. Okay. Oh, it was also on GBA. Yep, pretty well-known game. I think it got a sequel on PC. Don't think that ever came to consoles, though. Now, a few weeks back, we played a game called Dungeon Master 2, which I'm pretty sure was a contemporary rival of this game. That port was not so good. I didn't get anywhere in it. This, on the other hand, I did have some fun with it. I played this yesterday. It seems pretty neat. This intro has no sound or music, so it's just a huge build-up. SSI, together with Sega. Ooh. Oh, Yuzo Koshiro music. Mm. And this is a Westwood game. The, uh, the Dune, the Command and Conquer people. Oh. And FCI Pony Canyon. Oh boy. People with a great reputation. Together they present... An official oh Advanced Dungeons and Dragons this computer product. Just keeps going. So you thought Dark Wizard had a long intro. And there it is, Eye of the Beholder, a legend series, fantasy role-playing saga, Adventures of Dungeons and Dragons Volume 1. Thank God it lets you start a default party, though you can roll your own characters with all the different classes. They got elves, dwarves, halflings, um half elves, which are apparently different from halflings. Well, halflings are like not interested. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I appreciate your I appreciate your candor, Danny. I'm sure people can fill us in if they really care. The lords of Waterdeep have gathered to purge our city of an ancient evil. Some good voice acting in this one too. Give call to the heroes of the land and let us choose our champions. Master, they think they have found a solution. Have they? Figure just a <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't want to curse us, but I think our frame rate is stabilized. Find the nature of this evil and destroy it if you are able. Oh, we work on commission. Sucks. Prepare for the dangerous journey. Bring all your rings and uh, books. Bibles. Oh. Books. I guess a, and a sword. Which I guess you can use to slice your Bible in half. Are they ripping off Rambo? Or he's like arming up? Oh, we're done. That's all we need. Alright, we're good. We got our Bible. We got our sword. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, Operation Wolf, Begin which itself ripped off Rambo. All right, Danny, go right to your favorite place in all video games, the sewer. Uh-huh, the king sends us to journey into the sewer. That's where the whole adventure takes place, in the fucking sewer. 
Oh, and you can't even escape because a rock slide blocks your way. Their fates are sealed. Oh no. And now you're stuck. You're trapped in the sewer. Trapped like a damn sewer rat. Maybe the king needs to have the city destroyed because of, yeah, how bad the infrastructure is. <laughs> Maybe. So this game, all I know about it from what I've played of it is it has incredibly hot jams. The soundtrack is pretty amazing. For now, I'm just picking up some rocks. Gotta make use of what's in your environment. From what I can tell, this interface is pretty similar to the original PC version, and in fact this game has uh, mouse support. So it's also wow, pretty playable with a D-pad. Oh yeah. He's a Koshiro though, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, ah. bringing the big beats. Motohiro uh, Kawashima also did music for this, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes... Oh, we saw something in there, but it scurried away. It's a rat! Find the rat! Give me the rat! I want to see the rat! Skeleton had some lockpicks on it. Oh, we're gonna see some rats. Oh, I love the sewer techno, yeah. Be nice to the rats, by the way. Okay. Don't fight them, they're just rats. Ah! Whoa, cool goblin! Alright, so something I didn't get, and I had to actually read the manual for, to attack, you have to hit the B button on the weapons. If you try to push A, you'll just drop your weapons on the ground, which isn't too good. That sounds Got incredibly him. complicated. Yeah, usually if you hit A, it's all like, yeah, just put it down, it's fine. Overall, though, I think this does a better job of simplifying the equipment, uh, that kind of rig rigmarole that's present in these games. They make it a little bit simpler. They make it more obvious which parts of you are armed. Like, you put your boots on your feet, you put the sword in your hand. I've seen more complex. Yeah. I just picture all these warriors slipping on their headphones and jamming out. <laughs> They've all got like a four-way splitter on their iPod. <laughs> yeah, stick together. It's a crappy uh, Audio Technics cable. <laughs> What's our brand that we use? Ah, uh, Gear It. Yeah, stupid Gear It. You gotta replace it every couple months. Listen Music! To this wow! It goes pretty hard, yeah. Oh my god, it's a whole gang of these things. What are these, kobolds? No, these are not kobolds. These are like goblins. These are not kobolds. Kobolds are much more, I assume, dragon-like. Yeah. Lizard-esque. People in the back, they can use spells and stuff, but I don't think they start with any spells, because you can page through it and there's just, like, nothing. Are you telling me a, a wizard with a beard like that knows no spells? Yeah, he needs to level up. I think what we'll do is we'll give our back row people some throwing daggers so they can at least have some kind of fight. Uh, a goblin is go looks like a goblin and a kobold looks like a kobold. Very different. I'm um, glad you cleared that up. <laughs> well, a kobold looks like a lizard creature and a goblin looks like a goblin creature. Goblins? I don't know. How would you describe a goblin? Um, they just look like goblins. Mm -hmm. And over here we have rations. Music's over. Wait for oh, the loop. Oh, are you telling me that some gob some kobolds in D&D &D look like goblins? That's bullshit, and I don't accept it, and D&D &D is cancelled, and... That's uh, deceptive. I think that we are done playing fantasy games. That's it. I'm turning off the screen. <laughs> no. Alex has decided. Okay, kobolds are... Yeah, they're more animal-like than goblins, who are more human-like, I think, but... Okay. Well, there's something on the other side of this door. Should we let it through? Okay, so kobolds can either be goblins. Cool. Not goblins, but they can either be furry dogmen or like tiny lizard dragons. Okay. Uh, well, whatever just happened, it scrolled off the screen. I'm gonna assume we drank the mud that was there. It was delicious. Too. Yeah, it's good for you. It's like, you know, like a mud bath treatment for your mouth. Yeah, for your mouth. I like this. Usually I don't get into these games, but this one I thought was just friendly enough to make it, you know, a little bit obvious what you're supposed to be doing. Unlike Dungeon Master, where if you'll remember we just stopped right at the beginning. Oh, it's a, it's a floor tile. Oh, okay. Oh, that sucks. 
What if I leave something on it? There, see? Oh, now you're thinking. That's using the old noggin. See, I like that. That's nice and intuitive. So many of these games were so stuck in their PC roots, they were just like, nope, if this game isn't impossible to play, we're not releasing it. Just give it some hot jams, make it at least a little bit obvious how to play, and maybe people will like it. Yeah, this is pretty obvious how to play it. Like, this is more pick up and go than like a lot of other, like you mentioned earlier, of these kind of games. Mm -hmm. Especially on PC. Yeah, PC games like this I won't touch. It's got to be at least semi-consolized for my uh, brain to understand it. Slimy, spelly drain pipe reveals nothing. All right, who in our party will stick their head into the slimy drain pipe? Honestly, I think it's going to be the mage. Probably. Hey, uh, just so you know, the thief is bleeding. Oh, really? She's got a nosebleed. Look at her. Oh, yeah, kinda. Yeah. Why don't you stuff that up? Uh, mage, use your stop nosebleed spell. Use, like, some of your beard or something. You got too much of it anyway. Yeah, rip off a piece of beard. <laughs> That's how they do their magic. <laughs> ooh, 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 skull. Scrolls. Not skulls. Ooh, scroll armor. I'll take that. And a blessed scroll. Now the party they start you with, with the default party, covers all your bases. It's got a cleric, a mage, a bard to play these techno beats. Yeah, I love this! I hate how the song ends right there, just when it's getting good. But that's the limitations of our Red Book audio. Oh shit! Worms! Whoa, those worms suck. I appreciate these kinds of ports where they made it, they dumbed it down just enough for console. That really makes me get the core appeal of the game. Otherwise, if I was just playing the PC version straight, I'd be like, what the hell is this? Apparently the PC version of this game was identical to uh, the console version. So. Oh, really? Okay, well maybe they evolved the series to uh, just be more intuitive in general. That's nice. Maybe I just really hate Dungeon Master 2. Got a map. Oh, this does support the Mega Mouse. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's like, you're thinking of Wizardry, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Wizardry is the game that will drive you away forever from uh, first-person dungeon crawlers. <laughs> Tell you what, I haven't played Wizardry 4, but I have read about it, and that game sounds like a nightmare. That's a game that starts you off in an empty room with no exits, and you have to figure out what to do. PC version came with a sealed guide that was all like, look, if you have no idea how to beat the first floor, open this guide. We'll tell you that, but nothing more. Oh, oh shit! shit! Thief's that dead! That scream scared the crap out of me. <laughs> hey, Cleric, why don't you, uh, why don't you bless this mess? Thief's not coming back, Danny. Well, it's a blessed corpse, at least. Yeah. This corpse is going to heaven, baby. Yeah, much like Dark Wizard, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere meaningful in this game, but hopefully I got to show it off. Give you some idea if you might want to play it. I think it's better than most. It definitely holds up better than Dungeon Master did. If only for the music. The music is still so fucking good. build up and break down. Shit, why do we go in the sewers? Why don't we just make music on the surface? Yeah, why don't we just, you know, defeat the uh, the evil with good beats? Yeah. So you got a beholder down here? Fuck that. Who cares? That thing's got a million eyes. What about ears? Can it appreciate our music? <laughs> will, it go to our, will, it, will it go to our set? <laughs> you gotta go to our set. It's in the sewer. Alright, fighter, stick your hand in here. Oh. Well, guess what? I'm already lost. 
Did you get a map? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's set up camp. We will rest. We're gonna rest until you're healed, thief. You're gonna stave off that death. Just you wait. Honey, we've been asleep for nearly a hundred hours. Take a hundred hour nap in the sewer. Oh my god, it's still going! How are we not eaten by rats by this point? And you know what? I think I'm gonna leave my party here. Uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I have the Beholder for Sega CD. Pretty good port, some hot jams. Check it out, why not? You too can sleep 200, 200 hours in the hours. sewer. We're now God. fully rested. So, so maybe they just played an entire game of uh, Dark Wizard or something. I guess they did. Just set up in the sewers, plug a plug a Sega CD <laughs> into one of those slimy drain pipes. <laughs> Beautiful. I feel fully rested now. <sighs> Let's move on. Let's play some Shining Force CD. Okay. A game we've had requests for. This is a CD exclusive entry in Sega's popular strategy RPG uh, series. Well, kinda. It's actually a series of remakes. These are remakes of the Game Gear Shining Force games. Which is good because only one of the three Game Gear Shining Force games was officially translated here in the States. English versions of the other two are only available on this disc. And you can only unlock the third one by beating the first two. Sorry, just see, I want to take a nap using a big RPG sewer rat as a pillow. <laughs> that sounds comfy. And this game was made by Sonic. Sonic, software planning. Holy shit, I didn't know he was in game dev. Uh-huh. Damn. He's there in the trenches. He's not just a pretty face. A fierce battle with Dark Dragon ensued. When the Runefaust army yeah, Sonic and Camelot are the same, I'm pretty sure. Wait, so Sonic programmed Golden Sun? Uh, yeah. Damn. He gets Dragon around. He sure defeated. does. See ya, Gizmo. Oh yeah, see ya. Oh no, Tepid Snake, that's horrible. Return to their normal lives, vowing for renewed peace. Yeah, it turns out you need save files from the first two games, and save files take up more than some the Sega CD's here. internal memory. Some left so to unlock the third game, game, you gotta have a RAM cart. Oof. And, some and if that wasn't released in your territory, place. well, uh... Whoopsie doodle. And Anne Re returned to her kingdom as the Queen of Guardiana. Oh, even if you beat it without saving, you still wouldn't unlock it, I don't think. You need both the save files before it realizes uh, the third game should be unlocked. Oh, they're originals! Okay. Well, damn. You would definitely want to see those. 20 years after. As far as I know, the RAM carts aren't region locked at least, so you could import one from the States. I had one. Had to for Dark Wizard. It's Shining Force! Oh, I love that Desert Chrome. I love Shining Force. The first the first Shining Force is one of my favorite Genesis games. I love the hell out of it. Presented whatever, by Sonic. And it's presented by Sonic. For whatever reason, I rented the second one and it didn't click with me at all. I, I never ended up buying or playing much of that one. Never owned this one, either. Uh, let's not continue the story of Az, my temporary character. No, I said new game. Want me to delete the data? I'll do it. Goodbye, Az. See you later, Oh my Az. god, I saw that. That's so Golden Sun. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can really tell a Camelot-developed game, because they use those nodding heads for, like, Mario Kart, for Golden Sun. Mm-hmm. Alright, so this is where you pick uh, either Shining Force Game Gear 1 or Shining Force Game Gear 2, and you unlock more if you beat those two. 
I've, I've heard this game is super furry, so I don't know. The character design in these games is really good, and they do have a lot of furry characters. Good, good. Uh, the first game had a... What was it? A gopher with an intelligence helmet that made it super smart, and its name was Yogurt. Wow. This is Az2. <laughs> that was a cool name. Cool name. Multiple difficulty levels. That's pretty nice. It's not in the first game. Easy as usual. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Oh, Jogurt. That was his name. <laughs> This is the fun kind of fantasy, where it's typical sword and sorcery shit, but if you want to put a gopher in it, why not? Now here's something unfortunate if you're familiar with the Genesis Shining Force games. Uh, first of all, the flashing. Sorry about that. Second of all, from what I remember, there's no town sequences in these games. It's just straight up battle after battle after battle. Boo, but I get it. Yeah. The town parts weren't really in-depth or anything in the first two games, but I still enjoyed them. It's nice to wander around. Whoa, Look cool. at that guy. I like that guy. Our <laughs> king, Edmund the Reluctant. <laughs> Oh, Henry, you got tricked. Henry, why'd you open it? No, no healing. Bye, fuckers. <laughs> See you later. And thus, the warriors were sent out to kill someone. So, you know, the villain. Oh yeah, these games have horse people in them. <gasps> centaurs. That is a horse person! C centaurs, yeah. I think you call them. C yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Different from the horse woman in Dark Wizard. Wait, who's that? That was, uh, Robin. No, no, I meant this guy. Oh, okay. Sorry, I I love these characters. The son of Lug? Bruce, the son of Lug. I think it's referring to characters from the first two games. Is that a dog person or another horse? Shade! Shade is always so rude. You look like old Gong. Oh, Gong was from the first game for sure. His gig. It's Wendy. Yeah, I'm Wendy. Wendy the Witch. Son! Okay. So Wait. they're a horse person. Wait. Is, is the dad also a horse person? Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask some questions if that wasn't nope, the case. Nope, it's normal. <laughs> uh, these are Shining Force 1 characters. Okay. So yeah, this is like direct sequel to the first game. Cool. Where does the second one fit in the timeline? And Az will guide our way. Of course, the hero Az. Oh, we talking about Wendy's spicy chicken nuggets? Those yeah, are pretty good. They are. It's been a while since I had some. Hey, Wendy, cook us up some Wendy's. Wendy, make us some nugs. She's got a special spell that makes a uh, square-shaped patty. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Shining Force 2 takes place several decades after this scenario. Okay. Hmm, okay. So this is between 1 and 2. The, uh, the Shadows of the Empire of Shining Force. <laughs> no, with all the Star Wars remakes they're making, why haven't they remade Shadows of the Empire? Yeah, why haven't they? You could be a Wampa. And why haven't 
haven't they remade uh, the Star Wars uh, Christmas special? Yeah, why not? You know, you know, Life Day is now canon. Mm hmm. We all have to celebrate Life Day. I'm not even joking. It's actually canon again. They, uh. Someone in the Mandalorian was like, oh, can't wait for Life Day. And I'm like, fuck you. God Does that damn mean it. I have to think about Lumpy. They brought back Life Day, they brought back Lumpy. Wait till you see Baby Lumpy. Yeah, we should change it to Wife Day instead of Life Day. I was gonna say it's Wife Day now. So this is Shining Force. It's not hex-based, it's just uh, square-based. You got all these different characters. Essentially, you gotta line up next to the enemies and kill them. It's much more just similar to the Famicom Wars series than, say, uh, Master of Monsters. Don't, don't set my warrior on fire. They fast animations too, that's nice. Yeah, it doesn't have to load. How come Sonic could figure that out, but freaking Sega couldn't? Well, it's because it's Sonic and he's gotta go fast. True. Alright, take this, Incubus. You're a terrible band. I'm just a horn. Oh my god, you can kind of see his dingus. Yeah. That's fine. It's got Incubuses, it's got Succubuses, all your favorite buses. Yeah, there's like a tiny pixel of dingus there. <laughs> Those legs are crossing, it's just, you know. Can we get away with that? The upper dingus. The upper dingus. Sorry. Mm, probably don't want my archer in front, but my warrior is pretty weak right now. So I want to surround him. Now, people like priests and monks can heal, and they get, get experience for that. So you want to do that constantly. Fun. It's great. I love the original Shining Force. I, I had a copy of the cartridge as a kid. I beat that game. That was a game that I actually could beat. Right, horsemen can attack from diagonals. <laughs> I like that transition effect. That looks really cool. Oh, man, I'm realizing once again that I really like this game. I'm sad I don't have a real copy. I had all the big ones back in the day. I had freaking Lunar 1 and 2. I had Popful Mail. I had Flink. I sold Flink for like 10 bucks when it wasn't worth any money. <laughs> Nowadays, Flink is worth like a million dollars. Oh man, I'm so sorry. It's cool. This is one of the good parts of being a Sega CD fan, especially in this era, when games just price dropped almost instantly, because no one would buy them. And they wanted more space for their Super Nintendo games or whatever bullshit they had. Man, that horseman can go too far. Yeah. Everyone's got different movement speeds, and it turns out if you have a horse legs, you can move a long way. Ooh, Danny, you ever thought about doing a stream about all the Saturn Shining games? That would take a really long time, but I would love to play those someday. Marathon idea. Yeah. Could do that. It was the officially translated Shining Force 3 1, and then parts 2 and 3 had to be fan translated. This thing's setting my horse. My horse is on fire. Your horse ass is on fire, man. You're just a simple horse man trying to live your life. This should be enough to kill, right? Oh, not quite. But he leveled up. Pretty stronger. I would say if you're gonna get into one strategy RPG for the Sega CD, it's probably this one. Dark Wizard, way more complex, so if that's what you're into, go for that. But man, this is just way faster and more intuitive. Plus it's got this great character art that doesn't take a million years to load. threw away your Jaguar CD. Well, oh my those God. those things eventually break, so you were probably just saving yourself some heartbreak. And always let your heroes finish off uh, weakened enemies so they get maximum experience. 
Anyone else got any tips? I'm trying to remember how I used to play these games. Uh, let's see. Peter asks, does Shining Force have the shitty Fire Emblem thing where you can have characters ruined by bad stat games? No, that's one of the best parts. Uh, characters who die during battle don't stay dead. They come back to life. And that alone makes this way better than freaking uh, Fire Emblem or whatever. Yeah, I guess Fire Emblem would be the closest thing to compare this to. Uh, Seppa size uh, Jaguar CD was pre-broken when they got it. <laughs> they all are. They're just doomed to explode someday. In fact, if you want to play a game like this on Super Famicom, uh, some traders left Sonic Software planning, made their own company, and then completely ripped off Shining Force with a game called Feta, Emblem of Justice. If you look up screenshots of it, it looks exactly like this, like the same kind of character art. Same furry critters? Yeah, the same gameplay, even. Good. Just everything. They later remade it for the Sega Saturn, too. Alright, this battle's going pretty well. And again, we have it set on easy. Yeah, I didn't realize that people left Sonic Software Planning to uh, form the company that made Feta. I just thought it was a really inexplicable ripoff. I guess something about him made that uh, an okay thing to do. Uzi says, Feta, cheese of justice. <laughs> also, Teeter was more talking about how in, like, Fire Emblem, your characters can just end up useless at high levels because they didn't gain enough random stats. Oh, that too. Yeah, I don't remember that being a problem in Shining Force. That kind of sucks too. Okay, uh, Smeps mentions in these games you can screw over characters if you don't spread out experience games. Yes, you need to very carefully level up, like... Again, if you want a healer in your party, they have to constantly be healing so they can be high enough level later on. Welcome to our nerd stream, where I talk about all the nerdy games that I like. I was gonna say, this is like the nerdiest stream we've ever had, it really. Is. <laughs> I'm just like, yep, these are games I actually have experience with. Christ, I even mentioned watching The Mandalorian, I'm sorry. We've gone mainstream. Oh, God, we're really nerdy. We need to, okay, we need to talk about System Saycom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, what's your favorite mansion exploration game? I would have to say it's, uh... <laughs> constantly refreshing Zillow to see if the houses in our neighborhoods are like million dollar houses or whatever. Bruce! No! Bruce is exhausted. Sig, hang on. Should have maybe spaced out my party members a little bit. It's fine. Listen, there's nothing cooler than mansion games, okay? There's no gamer on Earth who doesn't love exploring abandoned mansions to discover their psychological problems. <laughs> Everyone loves this. Everyone loves this. Everyone. Let's have this monk punch this mage in the face. <clears throat> oh, barely did anything. Okay, if we can take him out before his next turn, that would be ideal. No. Does my hero get a turn? Uh oh. Bonk. Or as. All right, here we go. Heroic as gets to win the battle for everyone. Good job, as. Thanks, as. Oh, you up. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Alright, so Boogaloo mentions, uh... Camelot and Sonico were two different companies originally. While Sonico was owned by Hiroyuki Takahashi, his brother Shugo ran Camelot. After collaborating on Shining Force 3, that was when Sonico and Camelot merged. I see. Interesting. Hmm. I'd imagine there was some sort of complexity going on in the background. And then the uh, guy who ran Sonico took over as director of the merged Camelot. Sweet. Can horses swim? Centaurs uh, can swim. They just did. Whoa, rat man! Hold on, we can't we can't switch games yet. I that is a rat, rat man. Show me the rat. Show me okay. that rat. Let's go up to the rat and set him on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no. Be nice to him. <laughs> Mm 
So yeah, in Shining Force 1 and 2, between every battle, you go back to town, get a chance to regroup, rearm your, your party members. Not here. It's just battle to battle to battle. I think eventually they let you buy new stuff, but that's about it. I don't know if we're going to see what the rat sprite looks like. I'm going to try and go up to him as okay. quickly as possible. Yeah, just go up, say hi to the rat. Just, yeah, let's, just... let's go say hi to the rat. I just, that's the one thing I'd like to see. These goblins are going to destroy my party. It's fine. Wendy's just going to say hi to rat friend. Yeah. Oh, centaurs are no good on sand. Gotta remember that. I don't know why that's so funny to me. The rats hey, are running away! They are running away! That's bullshit! These rats are cowards! Letting the goblins do all their work. Oh, you have to have the leader cast a spell? Oh yeah, the egress spell would do it, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you ever do want to buy new stuff, you have that option. It's just not immediately presented to you. Games like this make me wish I had more time, you know? <laughs> I'd love to be able to sit down and play all the way through this. Because this really does remind me of Shining Force 1. My favorite. I don't think we're going to get to the rats, Alex. I think they're just going to keep running away. That's okay. I at least got to see their overworld sprite. Let's move on to Vi. Alright. So we mentioned working designs earlier, and there's one of their games we haven't played yet. It's called Vi, and it's spelled Ve, but it's pronounced Vi. This is probably the least liked of their Sega CD games. Uh, not many fans of Vi out there. It's a very slow and traditional, I would say PC Engine styled RPG. And it just seems kind of unremarkable compared to the others. Yeah, Shining Force CD is good. That's another top game for Sega CD, I would say. Absolutely. You may not ask Vi. So, I actually rented Vi um, after I played Lunar, and I don't know why, but I saw working designs and the art style, I'm like, oh, this is going to be like Lunar. It was not like Lunar. And no. I was, it, was, it was the first time I ever experienced gamer disappointment. <laughs> yeah, the name on the box doesn't mean anything if the game is kind of shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In this... the forgotten corner of the universe, a fierce battle was fought using... Mechanized technology so destructive, it laid waste to an entire solar system. Mm, the scenery is delicious. Mechanized mm, warrior. <laughs> its guidance systems damaged and pilot dead. You can probably turn it down a little. <laughs> the turbulent battle space. Destination unknown. After untold ages, the Berserker entered the space of a planet abundant with unsuspecting life and ignorant of technology. That's a cool shot. Programmed only for death, the machine <laughs> set about destroying everything in its path. It took the combined resources of the five mightiest wizards to divide and seal the power of the fearsome weapon. The damage inflicted on this small world was great, and many details of the assault were lost. However, even after a millennium had passed, people still spoke in awe as they recounted the legend of the armor and the five magicians of Vi. Wow, that aged me by like 50 years just listening to that. Hello, Danny! Hello, Alex! Welcome to Retro Pals! So we're going to play Vi today! We're going to play the ancient video the games. Of Prince Sandor's wedding to Lady Elin had finally arrived. Dignitaries from all parts of the four kingdoms flocked to the royal event, for the young prince promised to be an important leader. But as the ceremony advanced, well, they're getting married by the anime an pope. Insidious plot Look at was him. unfolding. Oh no! I do so promise. And do you, lady? I do so promise. <gasps> it's 
seen a lot of interrupted weddings today. Man, yeah, I guess if you're in a fantasy game, you just can't get married. Ah. Uh, remember these games? Yeah. What a time. Takes me back. Mm-hmm. Now, way back in the day, I remember reviews for this, not really liking this. GamePro hated everything about this game, except for the writing, which they said was some of the best writing they've seen in video games. I don't know how much that statement holds up today. But it's still one of the few times where I actually saw them say, Yep, this game's well written, but otherwise it's a piece of shit. Kind of makes sense. There truly is no dignity <clears throat> in death. Now I'll tell you my story with this game. Uh, it was the year after Lunar. I got this for Christmas. I played it and didn't like it. And eventually it got to the point where the game started crashing. <laughs> like it would just crash to a black screen. Whoa. So we took it back to the store, and I exchanged it for something else. So it just crash. Yeah. Good, good, good game. I don't know if it was my system or the game, but at least I didn't have to play it anymore. It was Vic Ireland coming into your house and just, like, fucking with you. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure I exchanged it for a game called Mansion of Hidden Souls. Hey, that's a great game! In fact, one of the best on the system. Good. If not the best uh, of the generation. Good trade, I would say. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, here's Otto the Wise. Oh no, we gotta find Otto the Wise. He's near Poth Cave. Ooh. It's a cave in the south. Gotta leave it once. Sorry, I'm, I'm booing because I just don't like the sound of Poth. <laughs> this is an incredibly generic game. Uh, at least it does have a run button. Jeffel? Yep, Jeffel is the nearest town. I like how cute his dead parents look. I'm so sorry. Yeah. There's an iPhone port of this game. It was one of the earliest iOS games, too. Not just that. Yeah, like, when the iPhone came out, they were all like, Yep, first game we got a port to this. Vi. The game everyone wants to see. Hey, Danny, do you know 14 Designs fucked up the balance on this game? I think they did, but not so much as they did on their other games. I'm pretty sure there's a rebalancing patch for this as well. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's the cutest slime. <laughs> Gelatinoid. Now I will tell you that at some point in the story you encounter the Wind Fairy, who transports you to a different part of the world, and the Working Designs version changed it so that she has magic farts. Cool. Uh-huh. Really cool. The only difference is she's talk she's all like, Oh, it must have been those beans I had for dinner and then instead of a wind sound it plays a fart noise when she bursts you away. <laughs> Baby. Victor Ireland's a freak. I'm sorry, Vic, if you're listening. The thing about working designs games is they, they chose some good games to translate, which uh, really helped people's opinion of them. Mm -hmm. But then they would translate kind of these garbagey games, which no one really wanted to play. Things like this, uh, Vastille for Turbo Duo wasn't that great. Okay, uh, Boogaloo mentions Sims produced the game, but it was developed by Hertz, who you may know from the uh, original version of Psychic World on MSX2. Genesis version of Outrun and Outrun 2019. Oh, okay. Yep, this, we were, these were all like second party studios, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they closed right after they made this game. That's a shame. Rip. Alright, Sander's pretty well equipped. I think at some point you need to find your second party member somewhere close to home. But it's been so long, and honestly, I don't think it's worth playing much more of this. <laughs> this is exactly what it looks like a generic JRPG. Hey, Danny, we got uh, more info about those farts from Tepid Snake. Oh, yeah? Tell me. Did you know you have to equip your entire party with filtration masks? Or else you die, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's something they added, an instant death mechanic, if you don't have the uh, proper thing. Not in the original game. That is a, a working designs edition. 
I tell you, it wasn't it wasn't always so easy for RPG fans. <laughs> you kind of had to take what people gave you. Yeah, it was not the best. Oh my god. Oh yeah, and this is one of those games where if you go a little bit too far, you get instantly outclassed by enemies that will kill you instantly. Yeah, wow. Um, can you run? Uh, run failed. And the game is now over. <laughs> <laughs> design. Yeah, we, we didn't see much of this, but then again, there's not much to see. This is a JRPG. It is exactly what it looks like, and it's very, very slow. The pacing is glacial, I would say. Back, does it even make you watch the intro again? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody, what's your favorite thing to do on the day of the prince's wedding? Is it to... to Mine to is to die at the hands of an evil wizard. Mm, I like uh, bombing a city, personally. <laughs> Why don't we play some Flink? Honestly, can we can we move on? Let's do that. Let's move oh, on. Oh, thank you. Is it just called Flink? Uh, it's technically called The Misadventures of Flink, but let's just call it Flink. I'm too afraid to type. Yeah, it's a dead man's party. <laughs> Boingo Boingo would be pl proud. Just... Now this game... This is a pretty fascinating one. This is a game that I only know about because it dropped to $15 by the time my birthday rolled around in 1995. And my dad was like, hmm, I want to get Street Fighter Alpha for myself, and I guess I should get something for the kid because it's his birthday. I know, he likes that RPG shit. <gasps> and that's how I got Flink. Oh, sign of quality. Vic Tokai picked this up, much like they did for Mansion of Hidden Souls. Mm -hmm. Smart, smart. And then I sold it, yeah. <laughs> This game will look very, very Amiga-ish because, in fact, it's made by Amiga developers. Yeah, I saw Cygnosis and I was like, ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. The creators of Lionheart, specifically. Uh, they also later made The Adventures of Lomax, a Lemmings-based platformer. This one, I think, got a cartridge release in Europe? I don't even know if that's true. That sounds right. Oh, and it also was on CD32. Wow, thank you, Type of Snake, for a thousand bits. Type of Snake says, a thousand bits to celebrate your brave, undignified JRPG death. For real, I love these sexy e streams. I always see some weird games I've never seen before, so you've earned this. Thank oh you man, so thank very you so much. much. Despite our undignified death, yeah, I do want to show <laughs> off as much of these games as we can, but in some cases like Vi, there's not much to see. Still, much appreciated, and glad you like these streams. I enjoy doing them. Look at these colors. This is neat. So muted. His eyes. Mm -hmm. This game looks French to me. Ah, uh, Lionheart. Was that French? It may have been French. Possibly. The Misadventures of Flink. So, is this a platformer? This is a platformer. One of the few we haven't ranked for uh, Genesis slash Mega CD. I know we've put it on the list a bunch and nobody picks it. Yeah, no one ever votes for Flink. <laughs> Broken Scholar, do you have history with this? <laughs> uh, apparently uh, Hank Nieborg did the art for this game. It's cool. It's a good looking game. But it has one fatal flaw which made me not like it and eventually sell it. And that is, it's a very lengthy game with no passwords or saves. You have to do it all in one go, and the game is at least three hours long. Huge misstep. The Sega CD had internal memory. There's no reason not to have a save system. I guess that's true. It's not French, but still. Okay. It's French adjacent. <laughs> that's how I describe Europe. Let's see. Broken Scholar says, this game is fucking impossible and it feels jank as fuck. Yeah, I got that sense too. Uh, it wouldn't have been so bad if, you know, the game was had reasonable difficulty, but it was both really hard and once you died or shut off the system, that was it. But it sure looks nice, doesn't it? You can pick up dudes, spin them away. Wow, this is pretty. 
Yeah, it is a visual feast. I think you can... Yeah, you can even pick up treasure chests. Bop dudes with them. It's got an alchemy system. You eventually learn all these different spells. Though what you do more than anything is hop and bop. Because, you know... It was the time to do that. It was the style. Mm -hmm. You hopped, you bopped. You moved how, on with your life. How much hopping and bopping did you do in the 90s? God, um, I was always getting in trouble for it. I, at one point, I hopped and bopped uh, in the middle of class and the teacher sent me out. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, go hop and bop in the hallway. Yeah, some dudes have these ingredients that you need to pick up and combine. Yeah, this is all coming back to me. I wish to make a magic leaf. Oh, I need other things. Never mind. Still pretty cool. An alchemy-themed platformer. Not something you saw a lot back in the day. Plays decently enough until you get a few levels in and it becomes impossible. But then again, Amiga developers. Mm -hmm. I will never get over the fact that there isn't a save system, though. <laughs> it would have been so easy and so necessary. I don't know why they didn't. God, this is pretty. It is. Oh, this is very Lionheart, if you've ever seen that game. Do that thing. Don't hurt them! Oh my god! Okay, maybe you have to hurt them. Yeah. That's cute, though. Whoa, okay. I'm glad there's someone here who's actually played this and knows my pain. Because <laughs> it looks like it should be so good, and then just really stupid problems keep it from being all that it could be. I would have played the hell out of this if only it had a save system, but anytime I booted this up it just felt like a waste of time. Man, this guy even has like really good hair animation. Yeah, you don't typically see that. Use the action button. I think that one old man actor should be in every Sega CD game. God, I do too. I want to. I want to hear him in uh, Sonic CD. Look at that. He's swaying in the breeze. God, his legs are so noodly. Mm -hmm. It's like Fantasia for your Sega CD. Crying! What are you <laughs> holding on to? Oh my god! Let's let's not let's think about on. that too okay, much. So... <laughs> Flink, you monster. Gotta say though. Might say that uh that girl is really <laughs> Okay. Alright, All right, we're moving on. It's not Friday, we're just getting the week True. started here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll be normal, sorry. Oh cool, the artists who work on this are still making games. They did Xeno Crisis? That came out like a couple weeks ago. That game looks amazing. Yeah, there's a brand new Genesis game that also is out for Switch and PS4 and stuff. Xeno Crisis, it's a, a twin stick shooter. It definitely has that Amiga look, that kind of shaded uh, Bitmap Brothers look. Speaking of Bitmap Brothers, someone bought their catalog today. What? Uh, Rebellion now owns the Bitmap Brothers catalog. Rebellion, Rebellion. Uh, the Sniper Elite people. Oh, wow. Also Alien vs. Predator. Oh, yeah, this looks like Lomax because I think it's the same team as Lomax. Yep, exact same team. You can think of Lomax as a uh, sequel somewhat. Uses a lot of the same concepts. I win. Man, this is... It's... It, this should be a classic. This should be one of the best Sega CD games. By all means. There's something wrong if I can beat Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck, but not Flink. <laughs> I mean... This game is hard as shit, though. Yeah. Can I bake something yet? Let's wake and bake. 
flink, no. You're only a baby. Now we're gonna use a magic leaf, some eagle feathers, and another magic leaf, and we're gonna make... A lemming. lemming. A little lemming came out. Who I then kicked away. Uh, well... I think that was a waste of ingredients right there. <laughs> yeah, that's the unfortunate part. You have to experiment with the different spells, and you lose your items if you don't make a correct spell. Cool. At least we got some lemmings out of it. I'm gonna make this jump. I don't know how that happened, but okay. It's fine. That's our yard right now. Yeah, all the leaves are falling. Yeah, there's a big tree in our yard, and it's it's shedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's shedding bad. Don't waste your ingredients, huh? Sucks for you, I can't read. Yes, they have trees in Texas. That's how we make pecan pies. Yeah, yeah. The trees are massive in Texas, too. It's fucking... Mm -hmm. Everything's bigger here. They're massive and they're real gnarly. They have, like, these weird... It's like, yeah. Texas trees. They're... Yeah, they're cool. They're cool and huge. Got some prog-sounding music in the background. The, uh, Texas does have the desert. It does have that. But it, it depends on what part of Texas you're in. Like, if you're in West Texas, it's more deserty. But if you're in, like, the rest of Texas, it's like, or at least where we are, it's very green and lush. Yeah. Too green and lush, it makes uh, yard work extremely difficult. <laughs> because. They know, never tell you that about Texas, the yard work. Actually, yeah, that's the thing. Because there's so many freaking. We get birds, and the birds eat plants, and then the birds shit out seeds, and then... Makes more plants, and, and eventually then... you have a yard full of poison trees. Yeah, we actually are dealing with pokeberry plants right now, and it's just... Ugh. Have you ever wondered why yard work was such a central point of uh, plots in King of the Hill? Yes, actually! That's because it reflects real life. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, that explains King of the Hill. Yes, yeah. it's true, though. All right, if you want to play this nowadays, I would recommend an emulator, save states, and a lot of patience, and a willingness to use those save states. Oh, I'm glad Sephisize had to deal with having a pokeberry thing. Yeah, we have one up front. We have one in the front yard that our bir that the birds in the neighborhood love, So, but we do need to take it down because it's gotten big enough that I'm like, this is too poisonous. Yeah. And I don't want some dumb kids coming to eat the berries and dying. Yeah, or that would, like... That would be pretty bad. Yeah, it would suck. <laughs> Fucking, and then, and then I checked the backyard, and in one spot that I haven't been able to clean, the, uh, the birds have been, I guess, shitting out a bunch of pokeberry plants, because that's where they're, oh God dang birds. Oh, God. Anyways, it's finally below 100 degrees, so I can do yard work again. Yeah. That's the other thing about Texas. You, in the summer, it's just too hot, and then your yard gets a mess, and ugh. Anyways, I'm... That's my epic rant about doing yard work in Texas. Mm -hmm. It's not all glitz and glamour. It's mostly leaves. So many leaves. So I think Flink works like Sonic, where if you have some magic, he'll lose it if he gets hit. And if you don't have magic, he just dies. Mm. Oops. This way. Don't get me wrong, it's a neat game, got tons of unique ideas, and you should absolutely check it out. It's just not everything you would want it to be, and that's really unfortunate. It's supposed to get the rocks up, whatever. Maybe you gotta... yeah, there you go. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Now what I really want to play is Adventures of Lomax, because I've never actually played that. I can only assume they fixed things that were wrong with this game. A little sprite he does. Mm-hmm. He's a sprightly little guy. 
Oh, low max is hard too. Why can't they make an easy game? <laughs> make easy game for baby gamer. <laughs> I'm baby gamer. I'm baby gamer. Danny, did you just let that happen? I think I did, yeah. <laughs> you do get plenty of continues, but I don't think we're going to continue. That's Plank. It's pretty good. It's pretty unique. It's uh, another canny localization choice by Vic Tokai. They were good at picking them. I gotta, gotta hand it to them there. You know what? We got just enough time to do something I wasn't sure if I wanted to do. Why don't you open up... RDF. So what was it, last week? We played a game called RDF Global Conflict. This was a terrible, terrible game. It was a first-person tank game. Uh, yeah, that folder. And then load up RDF. Got it. Horrible game. No one should ever have to play it. However, however, it had live-action FMV, the likes of which have never been seen. I discovered after the stream, that this FMV has not been ripped, it's not on YouTube anywhere, and there's an FMV clip after every level. There are 15 levels. Oh my god. I got through half of them, and I made some save states, so if y'all want to stick around for the last 10 minutes of this stream, and want to see some previously unseen FMV that you can't see anywhere else on the internet, let's do it. Can I, can I type in RDF? I'm so afraid. Yeah, type in RDF, it's okay, fine. Okay, if this crashes, I'm sorry. Okay, so From our friends at Absolute and Imagineering. I got about halfway through this game. I don't know if I can see the other half. If y'all really like this FMV and want to see more, I'll suffer through it, but I won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very painful game. It might be the worst Sega CD game. We should make it a Patreon incentive or something. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, so... At a highly classified the save states are mapped to the F buttons. Alex, why don't you hit F1? So afraid, okay. Mission complete! Hey, alright! Woo! This is after you beat level one. Oh boy. Yeah, y'all will have to tell me if this is worth it. <laughs> these these scenes are pretty good though. Okay, soldier. I'm taking off your training wheels. It just came in from HQ that a pilot on a bombing run went down near here. He's surrounded by enemy forces, and the situation's getting nice and ugly. Just the way we like it. When you get within range of the pilot, your radar should acquire his transponder and guide you in. And don't worry, I hate the Air Force. So if you screw this one up, I'm not going to lose sleep. I'll just lose you. Bye-bye, buddy. Yeah, he was just kind of rocking yeah, there, wasn't he? Yeah, I was like... He? That's what I do when I'm nervous. Is I get the okay? feeling this guy is not a trained actor, and I have the feeling that the shades are to prevent him from being embarrassed from being in front of a camera. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Man, should we just show off the intro so people aren't totally lost? Yeah. Do it. Why don't you reset? This intro is worth another watch anyways, so at least you have some context. But basically, this is a desert strike-like, only you're a tank on the ground, and you have to fulfill all kinds of missions. And we lost our audio. No. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah, when you use software, say you don't hear the intro audio. This is also a game that I've just recently discovered, and I'm pretty sure no one has ever played. There's no coverage of this on the internet. No long play. No, ex no evidence that people have ever finished this. No compilation of cutscenes, even though they're all pretty entertaining. I feel like this is a game they made just for me, and it sucks. I was still playing Sega CD in 1995. I was too, damn it. <laughs> it was just you and me. Alright, so for anyone new to this, here's the intro. Get caught up on the backstory. At a highly classified U.S. government proving grounds in the Nevada desert, a delegation of foreign officials has come to evaluate the capabilities of a special tactical force utilizing the M1A2 super battle tank. General Rockmatic describes what is about to unfold. General Rockmatic! And in the next few minutes, my friends, we will be seeing a lot of action. <laughs> this is what you all <laughs> I for. forgot these yeah, guys! I love these guys. The name of the game is High Intensity Armored Combat. 
live ammunition, hard targets, and wall-to-wall -wall action with our close friend, the M1A2 Super Battle Tank. 25,000 pounds of fighting machines designed to defeat the most sophisticated defensive and offensive weapon systems known to man. And after we designed it, gentlemen, we proved it. So hang on to your hats, boys. It's showtime. Literally the worst actor I've ever seen in a Sega CD game, which is saying something. That's like plumbers don't wear ties quality. And he gets even worse. Now it's my turn. The guy in the tank? He wrote the manual. That's so beautiful. Uh-huh. It's literally just people they had on staff. Man, I love this job. So what does he do for an encore? Whoa! An encore? <laughs> that was only an appetizer, gentlemen. Now it's time for the main course. Multiple armored ground targets. <laughs> he wrote the home improvement manual? That's not even a manual. Enjoy the ride, boys. Sorry to say it's a one-way ticket. I am sorry. Target acquired. Going to radar. And like 1500 It's time to pop this guy's bubble and have a little fun of our own. 20 miles downrange, chugging along at Mach 3. Let's see what he can do against this. That is just gonna fall down, sorry. What the? Nice try. Mach, loading, and walk. He's fucking with the supply trucks. This little piggy went to market. Abort the mission! Don't shoot the supply trucks! And this little piggy should stay home. That's enough, Sergeant. Ah! Man, your point. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> now can I have the keys to the tank on Saturday night? Remarkable demonstration, General. Anytime, anywhere, against any opponent, gentlemen, the rapid deployment force is the best in the world. Just massive Decker vibes from that intro. Totally, totally. Great. Okay, so now that we're all caught up again, let's see the other FMVs. <gasps> what? Info from Taizo. Jim Charney, who played the General Rock Matic, you know who he was? Absolute, Absolute lawyer! Are you <laughs> shitting me? That is amazing! They got the lawyer to do acting and the manual writer. That's, wow. Wow, I love this game! And that's the kind of acting you get as a result. So Alex, why don't you hit F2? This is after you beat level 2, you gotta rescue a dude in a, in a, who, in a downed fighter or something I, a down thing this game's things. horrible like i i wouldn't even recommend even talking about it it's just so boring but the rewards they're almost worth it so you think you're part of the team now well you're not not yet at least you proved you can take the heat but being able to cut it on the battlefield is just the beginning i demand total loyalty to the team and my mission Consider yourself a little puppy and me your master. The latest information from our eye in the sky has pinpointed a heavily guarded mobile <laughs> radar installation that is making air support in the sector a nightmare. Of course, I'd go and annihilate this bit of wayward technology myself. But I'm just but a I'm lawyer. Not. I have enough nightmares of my own. So move out, you dog. <laughs> Wow. I like how he would uh, lick his lips between lines while he was trying to catch up on the cue card. God. <laughs> so good. This mission takes place at night, and it's a fucking nightmare. I wouldn't recommend anyone live through this. Hit F3. 
Oh shit. No, this is one of the ones where I had to, uh, hang on, I'll do this. Okay. I think, it, yeah, okay. There you go. I parked myself right in front of the final, uh, mission target. There we go, mission complete. Man, him being a lawyer just puts all the pieces together. That makes perfect sense now. It's so funny. I really know how to win a battle. You're really good at winning. Good boy! Maybe it wasn't a mistake taking you into the team after all. Then again, maybe it was. Just remember, your devotion to me and the team will be tested time after time. If you want to thrive and survive, you'd better be ready to put your life on the line every mission, every day. But since you've done so well so far, I'm going to give you a break. We've been asked to escort a convoy north to Alpha Company. My latest intelligence says there's no enemy activity in the area, so you've got a nice little drive through the countryside. Just make sure everyone stays within the speed limit and have fun. It's not a drive through the countryside. He lies to you. This is the toughest level to date. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad everyone loves this guy's acting. Uh, Bobinator, yes, there are unique death FMVs for every way you die. There's a, a, an FMV if you get exploded by a missile, one if you get blown up by machine gun fire. So much FMV to rip from this game when I have the time. Um, what are we on, F4? Yeah. F4. Mission complete! This one you have to escort a supply truck, uh, convoy or something. I don't think the convoy can be destroyed, so that's nice. So all the enemies just shoot you instead. You did it, you're fine. They're uh -huh. trying to kill you, but you're fine. Notice all those enemies swarming me? That kind of happens. This game's impossible. That was fantastic shooting. Guess things went a little differently than planned back there. Seems like our friends have got a few more tricks up their sleeves than we thought. Well, now it's time to kick some serious butt. We've located their headquarters, and I want it turned into my personal parking lot. You may have heard that some of the guys here say the mission is suicidal, but I say as long as it's you, who cares? I'm <laughs> only kidding. Right now, you're the best tank driver we've got. When you get back from this op, we're going to sit down for a serious talk about what's really wrong with this world. <laughs> that is, if you're still part of it, adios, amigo. Oh, God, we get to hear his political opinions at Thanksgiving. That sucks. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> George Wood, yes. Oh, my God, That complete yes. lack of training, the weird delivery. Yeah, totally, totally. What is it, F5 now? I think so. F5 me. Mission complete. Thank you uh, for doing this, Danny. There's a cheat in this game. The thing is, all your weapons are totally useless and you'll get overwhelmed instantly, but you have a small number of smoke grenades that you can set off, and when you do, all the enemies stop firing, and you can use that time to destroy all the targets. Still isn't a good game, though. Mm -mm. Alright, here's our last mission in the jungle. So you get to go back in the great big convoy. Plane or whatever it is. Whatever. George Wood meets George Hamilton. <laughs> and after that point, you get to go to the Middle East. See, at this point, I thought, okay, I've been playing this game for a good couple hours. This is probably like one final mission where they send you to the Middle East to blow up Saddam or whatever. Mm hmm. Instead, the game just keeps going. It presents you with five new missions. And there's another world, in-game world, after this for a total of 15 missions. So the game is something like four times longer than I thought it would be. But there are still act is there still actors in the cutscenes? Oh, absolutely. our mobile command unit. We get all the satellite TV channels. Where's my lawyer? There he yeah. is. Hey, K. Price. This is my favorite movie. Welcome.
mountains in the desert, man. 120 in the shade, and there is no shade, can really make you see things that aren't there, if you know what I mean. Who's got the suntan lotion? What? No suntan lotion? <laughs> How can you fight a war without suntan lotion? Ah, the joys of sandbox combat. Well, we've got a neat little hostage situation to contend with. Rebel factions in control of the Maxon oil refinery. Almost all the employees are stuck inside. And those that tried to get out are now feeding the vultures. <laughs> They've got highly trained sentries posted on the outskirts of the complex that need to be located and taken out. I know you can do this. You're a miracle worker, soldier. Now let's see some miracles. Now if you fail, you're going to... Um... What was that? You're going to be, um, feeding the vultures. This guy. <laughs> this guy fucking sucks. This, this guy is incredible. He's the best Sega CD actor I've ever seen. Alright, next one? Yeah, next one. Hey, you did it. Good job. Yeah, hey, yeah. Also, um, until he, he made that crack about the suntan lotion, I didn't know that he was trying for a comedic role. I legit, that completely just flew past me. I didn't know if he was trying for comedy or if, or if he was going to be exposed as, like, secretly nuts at the end and you have to take him on. But no, it's just a, a light comedic role. Uh, apparently. Shh. That was excellent work, partner. But we've got a problem. We've detected listening posts positioned along the oil pipelines leading to the refinery housing complex. They must be taken out. If they're not... Our positions will be revealed when we go in for a full-scale assault on the compound. And that means lots more happy vultures. Now get in there and blast them to pieces! Not the vultures, the listening posts! Oh. I love him, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can see how it wasn't clear to me, right? Like, you can't <laughs> read that as comedic until it becomes, uh, you know, more obvious later on. Yeah, do the next one. Mission complete. This may be the last one. I'm pretty sure this is where I stopped. Mm, I don't blame you. There's so many. Fifteen levels! Jesus Christ. All with the most impossible gameplay you've ever seen. Okay. It's time to liberate the workers from the complex. The only thing between us and them are a few rebels. As you may have noticed, they are very well equipped and very upset with us. It might have something to do with our deodorant, but I'm not sure. There are two very important things to remember on this mission. Number one, the longer it takes to do the job, the worse it's going to get for those workers. Number two, number two, <laughs> uh. Number one is good enough. Oh. We're all with you, soldier. In spirit, that is. He's always licking his lips and swallowing. It's so distracting. <laughs> Did they even tell him what acting was? I mean... <laughs> does he need to know what the... All right, what was the, the what was the next one? F8? Yeah. Try hitting that. Okay, no, this is as far as I've gotten in the game. I got to this point and I said, fuck this. I could be doing literally anything else with my time. <laughs> But based on what you've seen, uh, should I go ahead and play through the rest of the game? Should I see the rest of those cutscenes and then rip them to YouTube so no one else has to? <laughs> I'm kind of tempted because who else is going to do this? Literally, literally no one else wants to do this. There's no reason to. Yes. No possible reason. Okay, now I guess I please, have reason to. Please, this needs to be on YouTube. This has to be on YouTube. Yeah, do I, it. Yes. okay. Please, Bandan, you do the Lord's work. Thank you. You will suffer for it, but please, you must. Uh, cheat if you need to. Nobody else will do this. There's no cheats. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to enable infinite health. Maybe there's some way you can do that in BizHawk. Uh, there's no uh, FMV ripping utility for the Sega CD because they all use so many different codecs. It's really impossible. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, you gotta manually go in and capture that shit. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate. But if people really want to see more of Commander Rockhard or whatever his name was... Rock Dick or something. Commander Rock Dick, yeah... Alright, okay, so I'll take this reasonably. I'll do one mission a night. I won't try and 
impress myself into doing this. But hopefully over the next few weeks I'll be able to show you the rest of the FMVs in RDF and save you from ever having to play this horrible video game. There we go. Oh, Bonus FMV. To, yeah, you're about to die. Yep. Yeah, Rock General Medic. Rock Rock Medic, that's what it is. <laughs> So you can look forward to seeing more of the general in the weeks and months ahead as I slowly play through this game. It's it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. No one else wants to take up the mantle. No one else wants to be the guy to rip the general's videos, but I will be that guy to listen to all his horrible jokes. I think those were jokes. They're it's comedy. Sorta, sorta. Well, that's us. That's 100% us. We have to rip the RDF videos. Yeah, it's the our best, brand. Th when I think of Retro Pals, when I think of our brand, I think of me saying comedy in a very distressed voice. My favorite part is when he completely flatly said, ah, the joys of sandbox combat. Yes! Which is kind of reflecting on the game itself because it's a sandbox com combat game to begin with. <laughs> so whenever I think of that game, I just think, ah, the joys of sandbox combat. Thank you for watching. Thank this concludes this edition of Sega CD Monday. We'll be back next week with more of this stuff, more FMV, more fantasy-themed RPGs, more of the great stuff you love from the Sega CD. If you want to see more FMV, tune into our stream on Wednesday evening. Yes. We'll be live at 7 p.m. Central with a PC full motion video showcase featuring Soldier Boys, which Alex still has to practice. Yes, I do. It's a tough game. Good luck at that. Thank you. Um... Uh, well, thank you all so very much for yeah, watching. Yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. Alex, why don't you wrap us <laughs> up? I'll look for a host. <laughs> did, did, uh, did the RDF kind of ruin your brain? The general ruined my brain. I can't talk anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> he sapped my ability to act in front of a microphone. You want to talk like this now, but... Don't be feeding the vultures. Christ almighty. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Thanksgiving this week. I hope you all have a good time. Uh, we're actually not going to be streaming on Friday, but like Danny said, we will be here on Wednesday with some good FMV stuff. Uh, if you uh, want to see more of our streams off of uh, Twitch, you can go to youtube.com slash retropals. That's where we post highlights of our streams, and it's where we post our podcast, including the latest episode of our podcast, which is all about Camp California and the failed uh, cartoon that went along with it. Yeah, so. Mike, Mike loves Great Boondoggle, Camp mm -hmm. California. We're going to go ahead and let that stay up for another week so mm -hmm. that gets the promotion we want. It's good stuff. Go watch it if you haven't. Um, oh, Real Soviet Bear is streaming Master System games. Ooh. His favorite system... Uh, Soviet Bear is just an expert at all things Master System. He recently started up a video series about it and released the second episode of it today. So go check him out. I think he's playing... It looks like Alex Kidd's Shinobi World. That's mm, a good one. That's a wild one. So enjoy that. Have a good rest of your day. And thank you for watching. We'll see you later. See you, folks.